Time now for the Voice of the Land on the Big Play Network with your hosts, Kevin Arnold and Always Positive Jay. Welcome on in to another edition of the Voice of the Land. And boy, do we wish we were coming to you under better circumstances than we are this evening. We are brought to you by Factor Technical. They'll get the right person in the right job the first time. Of course, a part of the Big Play family, the Big Play Sports Network, and partner with LPV Productions. I am Kevin Arnold. Always positive. Jay is in his man cave somewhere. I'm in a random office where no one's ever going to know an AI system that is audio or Peter Tellup. He is our producer extraordinaire. He is somewhere in the stratosphere as well. He's everywhere. He is everywhere. Now... I think it's just, we just have to just jump right in tonight. I don't know how, like, I don't even know how words are going to form. I've been listening to this stuff all day long. Breaking news this morning about 8.50, Deshaun Watson, no one expecting it, out for the season, needing surgery on his shoulder. Of course, he also had a high ankle sprain, so if he didn't have the shoulder problem, would he actually play this week like he said he would? Probably not, because that's usually like a several-week type injury is a high ankle sprain. But, Jay, I mean, done for the season, and here we go again. I, I like I don't want to I don't want to take shots at, at someone that has an injury or anything like that. That's not what this is. But we, you know, it's the luck. It's the bad luck that we feel that we all have is what you're speaking on. Yes. And- Waiting for that shoe to drop, and it dropped. Uh, dude, I'm at work, and I'm just getting ready to turn on the radio. And right, before, literally right before it, my phone sends off a message. I look at my phone. My brother sends me a message. Watson's out for the year as I read it. And I thought, Mike, what happened to his ankle? So I look it up, and it's shoulder. I'm like, I thought that was fixed. What's going on here? Is this real? I'm like, oh, my God. And I saw the release exactly. Browns and like everybody it's like a gut punch dude it just you feel like you got the wind going behind your back and you're sailing good and all of a sudden boom there goes the wind and your sails are down and you know what I ain't getting down dude I refuse to do it I'm sorry this team keeps overcoming stuff like they won two games with Paul, uh, PJ Walker already they're two and one this defense is unreal good the special teams is balling out. It's, am I, are we going to win the Super Bowl? Is that, is that really going to happen anymore? No, probably not. I'm a re- we're realist on this show. But if we can get to the playoffs and maybe even win one game, that would be astonishing for this team for so, in so many ways, Kevin. It would build bonds. It would, it would just show them toughness. Like they'll always have this to lean back on in the future seasons. Like, hey, we've been through it all before. And, that is amazing for a team to go have. So I'm, dude. As always, positive Jay has to be, dude. I'm, I'm finding the positive in this, and I think this is gonna, it could make the team, even more together, if, if you believe it or not. So I actually find that interesting, and like I know that you're always positive, Jay, and you're gonna find a positive, positive spin. But I've heard a lot of fans reacting on all the different shows and programs for Cleveland sports today. And a lot of people are, are positive. Like you are, they're taking this positive spin on it. We have the defense, we have the running game. Um, there's no issue with DTR being the starter. Like every, but like everything is still coming up roses, roses to fans. Like, I don't know. It, it hit a little bit hard knowing that the starter that we paid $230 million started to look like that level of quarterback or that he can get back to that level and then to have this bomb dropped on us this morning I mean no one even knew even I've heard players today talking about we knew that his ankle was hurting him we had no idea about his shoulder and this happened in the second quarter so look at what he did in that second half 14 14 for 14 after it perfect throwing uh perfect percentage out there on the field in the second half this dude has a broken shoulder who most people said, and, and, you know, if you listen to Twitter doctors or, or doctor sources that people have, he 
shouldn't have been able to even move his shoulder with what happened to it. Adrenaline does some crazy things. It's, I can't believe it happened. It still like baffled me. Like you said, am I going to be positive? Of course, I'm going to keep going. We're we're six and three. I'm not giving up. But it just came out of nowhere, Kevin. Why does this always happen to us? Why? It's like we got a black cloud that just constantly strikes us with lightning and it's like, dude, just go away. I don't know, man. I, I honestly I don't know. And uh we're trained in this, like, but it still sucks every single time. Like we've been through it. We can't have nice things. And for some reason, it just it can it keeps happening and keeps happening. I think this Sunday is going to say a lot about the resilience of this team. I know that a lot of games have already spoken highly of that and spoken highly of what Kevin Stefanski has been able to get this team to do. And they're definitely listening to his message. If you saw that post-game locker room, that's the most emotion I have seen from Kevin Stefanski. And it seemed to grow each win to each win this season. I've seen more and more emotion in, in past seasons, even you know when they put out these videos. I know that they've had a social distance and all that. We only had, what, one season of an example, and we were uh, seven and ten or whatever the heck it was last year. So we didn't get many of them. But it was just like this stoic, I don't know if this is real type. Like, I love watching Dan Campbell and the Lions. I love watching, uh, oh, gosh, who is the – D'Amico Ryan and the uh, – Houston Texans like like the energy but that's who those guys are so you're not going to get as much from Kevin Stefanski but it's growing little by little so he's still being genuine the message is still the same but what did he say at the start of that who was going to play tougher longer and he screamed that and that's what this Browns team does and did on Sunday so we have seen a long story so far of their resilience but i think resilience is going to be fully on display this sunday if they are able to overcome this and they get the win with a rookie quarterback whose first impression was let's say unbecoming of a decent nfl quarterback to say the least and he was put in a rough position let's get that out of the way i know i know he was put in a rough position everyone's like oh you're gonna put a guy out that did this and this and like dude he didn't even know he was starting until that day his game plan wasn't for him like let's see what he does do when he's got a full week that's like i don't know i'm not gonna bury the kid i can understand and i can see the argument why don't you play pj walker i could also say dude turns the ball over at a ridiculous rate right it was two and one though two and one's two and one was he two and one because he carried it or is it two and one because your defense is that good that's up to them that's <laughs> not my call that's not your I call mean, you know? he he did enough to uh <laughs> almost throw away a lot of games dude he did he did enough to throw away a lot of games but he did enough to to win a lot of to win those games that he was in so mm-hmm. The fact that they're going to DTR, I don't know that it's like doing right by your draft picks or anything like that. I've heard that phrase. That uh, that there's always these catchphrases as as Cleveland sports fans. I've heard that phrase today. I mean, this team played five years of college football. Like he's more than ready to play this game. He's gonna have to be because this team is in in prime position, and we're gonna find out a lot tomorrow night. There is a AFC North battle tomorrow night in Baltimore. Baltimore has to come off that tough loss, facing a team that's coming off a tough loss. The advantage the Ravens have is that they're at home. Ball, uh, Cincinnati's coming in. Joe Burrow, we'll see if he can get a uh, a victory on the road. And if Cincinnati wins, the battle on Sunday's for first place in the division. You go through all of this. In and the first can. 10 games, and you are seven and three. And whether they're battling for the first place in the division or not, 
you get your get back against the Ravens and the Steelers, and you're at seven and three and within reach of the division. I mean, that's where you start to think about, you know, is this one of those special years? You know, despite all everything that's going on, success still happens. That'll be something to look at as we head into Thanksgiving next week when we do our show. I know we'll probably like pre-record it and but we'll still have an actual game to talk about. We'll see how good, how much of a quarterback whisperer Kevin Stefanski is now that he has a week to get DTR ready and how resilient this team is, how good this defense really is. Because you know you're going to be facing a defense that is chomping at the bit at this very moment since 8.50 this morning. If not, they were already doing it before that, but now more so because guess what? The Steelers come to town. What does Mike Tomlin love to do? He loves to pick on rookie quarterbacks. I mean, that's any head coach's dream is to play a rookie quarterback. But And he's one of the ones that does it the best. Oh, yeah. He's pretty good. You just got to go in and win, man. You got to punch him in the mouth. You got to be physical. And you just, like they said, who's going to be more, who's going to be tougher longer? Who's going to win this game? And they love those mucked up, drag it in the mud kind of games and that's a game we're going to have to play and we're going to have to beat them at their own game tough defense run the ball don't turn it over that's how you're going to have to beat them and the guy that's going to have to step up defensively not like he hasn't stepped up already yeah, this know. season but miles garrett miles garrett we talked we've talked about on this show jay in the big games especially against your divisional opponents outside of joe burrow we don't see Miles Garrett. Well, he well he's been doing through, it now. He came through last week against Lamar Jackson. Helped keep the Browns in that game to come back and win. He's got to do it against Kenny Pickett and the Steelers. You have to do it against Kenny Pickett and the Steelers this Sorry, week. Sorry, Kenny Pickett sucks, dude. They have to beat him. Right. I can't but, have this dude beating me. But he is kind of like P.J. Walker. He can put you in position to lose a game, but that defense keeps him in it. And Kenny Pickett has shown you give him one final drive and something clicks, something changes where he looks like a completely different quarterback. This game is probably going to be close. If the Steelers are the ones with the, the ball last and the Browns are up, we need Miles Garrett and someone else to step up. I don't know if Denzel Ward is playing in this game or not. It was just a minor neck injury, but I, I mean, this year with injuries, we've heard Sunday night after a game, this guy's playing. By the time we get to Wednesday, we've hit the other extreme. They're playing. They're out for the entire season. So we have seen the full gambit. I can't believe anything until that person actually steps on the field on Sunday. So, but if he is playing, if Denzel Ward is playing, him, Miles Garrett, need to lead this defense, get some of those unsung heroes like Shelby Harris, Maurice Hurst up the middle, linebacking core. You, you got to do it again. Emotions of last week, got to put those aside, and you got to get the job done on Sunday. Somehow, some way, you got to find a way to win. Now, if they, you know, they're up against it at this point. They got nothing else but to, you know, every single game, everything you got, let's go get it. Yeah. Um. You know, sometimes I leave you speechless, Jay, and it, <laughs> it's not great for the show, <laughs> but it's so funny because I just see you staring. Yeah. And I'm just it, like, it, oh, my gosh. I, I like, uh, remotes, which kind of – that's the one thing that sucks – and sometimes I'm like, all right, he'll probably get ready to, like, wrap it up here and cut to break. And then you stop, and then you look at me, I'm like, oh, he wants me to, like, and then it goes in my own head. I'm like, he wants me to respond. What am I going to respond? Why am I talking to myself? Now you're just staring <laughs> at the screen. <laughs> yeah. <nice. laughs> when it's, hey, we get to laugh about it. It's funny, if but if it's you're gonna so do unprofessional that, on my part. If you're going to do that, you might as well just put the Iron Man mask in in the spot where you are right now we'll just i'll just stare at that i'll talk to iron man and know that i got to keep the conversation going 
Um, we do have comments on our YouTube channel at Boys nice. Podcast. We'll get to that on the other side of the break. We're only going till nine o'clock. We got a shorter show, work, and all those other things. It's been a weird day. But DTR and PJ Walker, we'll talk about that. Thoughts on that move on the other side. This is the Voice in Land on the Big Play Network. Whether you're looking to hire new talent or start a new career, Vector Technical has you covered. Vector Technical is a 28-year-old staffing firm that has helped thousands of job seekers advance in their career with reputable partners throughout Northeastern Ohio. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. With an above average higher in rate of one in four candidates, Vector works hard to connect the right person with the right opportunity the first time. Vector Technical hires for skilled manufacturing and light industrial work and is sure to have a career that you've been looking for. To learn more, visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com. Welcome back to The Voice of Land. On this Wednesday night, of course, reacting to the news today that everybody's reacting to, Deshaun Watson out for the year. We are here on the Big Play Network, of course, brought to you by Vector Technical. More information on them to come as the show goes on. We are here until 9 o'clock. I am with Always Positive, Jay, not Iron Man. And Jay, we do have, let's get to the comments on YouTube first, and then we'll talk about coming up. We'll talk PJ Walker versus DTR. Do we agree with Coach Stefanski's decision on that? But Brian May seems like this might be a friend of yours, Peter, someone that you know. What was the name? Peter. Uh, Brian Maiden. Oh, yeah, Brian. Because <laughs> uh, he says, Pete, it's Brian Maid. Uh, <laughs> there you go. So and he, uh, he says that uh, Sunday, Kareem Hunt will be more involved than in recent weeks. Like MC Hammer would say, Browns are closing games and are too legit to quit. And adds, don't forget, we lost two QBs in the 80s, and I think Gary Danielson came in, I believe. And I, I believe I heard um, Tony Grossi, the Browns analyst for ESPN Cleveland, and the Browns radio network, one of the contributors to their pregame show as well. He was mentioning that story as well, where the Browns still made the playoffs and they're going to like, that's the track that they're on. And all of these other guys yeah, the in the Eagles locker room. won a Super Bowl with Carson Wentz, who was balling out, went down. It's over. It's over. No, Nick Foles stepped in. They kept winning. They won the Super Bowl. It is plausible. It Don't is. ever give up. I think the fact it, that this team, when we were down against the Ravens, the team never gave up. I mean, so many times in the past, I think we would see a, a team get down by two scores, and then they just kind of went through the motions to finish out the game. And this team, did that. they fought back. You could see how, like, pumped they were, that they were, they were not going to give up. Like, that defensive line going after Lamar, you know, in the fourth quarter, they – they went after it, you know, and the fact that we got out of there with the win is, is one. It's just amazing. It sucks that we lost Watson, but I think Brian's right. I think, you know, Hey, hunt has just been, he, hunt's been getting better and better and better. You know, the more he plays. And I think this whole same team, with Ford. Yeah. Ford's same with, same yeah, with Ford. Yeah, Ford, yeah, he did. And I think this team's going to come together Before and he... they're going to rally around this. And I think, I'm I'm expecting good things out of them against the Steelers. Yeah, you guys just brought up the Baltimore game. You know how much I was looking forward to doing this show? <laughs> it was so different in my head before all this happened. I was like, oh, it's victory Wednesday. Let's go. And it's like, no. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, I mean, that I was mean... awesome. The game was amazing. Like, I don't want to, like, poo-poo what this team is doing. They're over. They were down two tackles. They're, Deshaun's obviously beat up, banged up ankle. Ward goes out with a, on a cheap shot, and they and they were down. And they just kept fighting, fighting, fighting. They didn't lead at all until they kicked the field goal, and the game was over. Like that's that's what happens to us usually. It is what it is what happens to us too often. I mean. What was it? Wasn't it a game against the Ravens, maybe a Monday nighter where they blocked a field goal and returned it for a touchdown to beat us? Yeah. Um, <laughs> Dude, I mean, we've seen it all. And now we're the ones doing it, which, hey, hey let's all go. Right. All 
all right, we say we've seen it all. And then we see something new. We are the team that will always see what oh, yeah, no we'll other team will but don't, We'll invent new ways. Yes. We're always down to invent new ways. But they didn't on Sunday, and they haven't this season. Yes, I know. Hey, ball off of a helmet goes for an interception, and the Seahawks come back. They get the touchdown. They beat us. Well, look, the last two weeks, the, the football gods have been on our side because the uh, the football off of a helmet has gone our way. It's led to stuff like a Greg Newsom pick six. Who I called, which I called. <laughs> yeah, that yes, was, you did. That He's was really impressive. On my show. He's coming on yeah. the show, dude. I, yeah. It's going to happen. I think during the season, I think it's a little bit tougher for us to get players. Like, we need to grow our base a little bit more. And I think then. Uh, I will talk to you guys off base. Like, I, it might not be, it might have to be a pre recorded thing. That's, that's fine. I yeah, that's what I said. That's fine. Yeah. 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 We'll figure something out. Just uh, all we need is times and dates, yeah, possible as, dates, and we'll do it. As soon as Buddy a text, I was like, your boy's going to get a pick six this week. And I, I showed you guys, obviously. Yes. When he picked up, like, go, go, go. He got it. He hit the touchdown. I'm doing my basement by myself. I'm like, Greg's coming on the show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, so yeah, like I was having a great time till about, like you said, eight fifty-five. I'm like sitting there, I'm like, do I even want to listen to sports radio today? Do I want to go on Twitter? I had to work it in, and I didn't want to listen to it. So. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> so, and I mean, we're doing this now, so we're listening to ourselves do it too. Look, I, I mean, when I when I saw the news, it took a while because I put Lincoln down for for a nap before I. You know, as we were figuring out where we were taking him for a babysitter today. And he ended up like rolling and laying on my arm. So like I could not move where we were, where he was taking a nap at, and I was just wide awake. I couldn't so my phone was too far away, couldn't reach it. And he started to finally stir and I was getting him ready to go to the babysitter. I pick up my phone and I think I looked at it three or four times to make sure I wasn't asleep. Yeah, it was like, I just, I didn't believe it. I did not believe it. And then, but it's, it's the Browns app that's, that's telling me this. It's the Browns that is telling me this, not, not like the athletic or bleacher report or ESPN. Like this is the Browns. So um, yeah, I was, I was dumbfounded. And now we got to switch gears and DTR for, for the time being is, is the guy. He yep. gets another chance to start. And we've got a comment from uh, Blake Bucky on uh, Facebook it says, wouldn't hate getting a seasoned veteran to back up DTR, someone like a Matt Ryan or Joe Flacco. Nothing against PJ um, Walker, but I just don't trust him. LOL. And I, I agree. You like Jay said, hmm. he's he's had you know flashes of you know good play, really good play, and then just some I don't know. He's a he tends to turn the ball over, but I hate to say it, so did Watson. I mean that yeah. quite that the last Steelers game. Take away one of those turnovers that Watson had, the, either the interception on the first, you know, pass, and or the strip, you know, fumble for a touchdown at the end of the game to seal it for the Steelers. Take away one of those, we would have won that game. I mean, look, this team has 19 turnovers in in nine games. That's over three turnovers a game. Like, no, two turnovers a game. Like that's Hold not on to the ball, and that's what DTR is going to have to do now, Blake. Shout out to you. I, I, we need to catch up, buddy. We need to catch up. Somebody I worked with at Progressive. But he brings up an interesting conversation, so I'll, I'll phrase it this way. Jay, if you had the option, this is DTR, PJ Walker, or veteran like he's trying to mention. Only vet I'm bringing in is Tom Brady. I don't want Matt Ryan. That dude is a turnover machine at the end mm-hmm. of his career. He's yep. got a new alarm. Uh, he's in the broadcast booth. Yeah. Who's the other one he wanted? I said Joe what Flacco. Matt Ryan. Oh, God, Joe no. I never want to see Joe Flacco <laughs> on a Browns jersey. Like, neither, oh. do, neither do I. He's, I mean, he beat our terrible defense last year, but that defense was yeah. terrible. I mean, I would no, love to see him go up against it now. You don't want Joe Flacco on a Browns jersey. That just. No, I, I don't either. But here's the thing. I'm pretty sure he'd catch on fire. He would just burst <laughs> into flames. 
here's a reason I don't want Joe Flacco right now anyway. He sucks. Yes, but he would also look better in practice than he would in a game because for some reason, every time he saw a brown and orange uniform with the Cleveland Browns, just like Ben <laughs> Roethlisberger, they just absolutely went off. No matter what type of season they were having, they would always absolutely go off and somehow beat us. So he'd probably beat our defense in practice, but it'd be a different team. So he'd throw the ball to them the whole time. In terms of, DT, if you just look at D, DTR versus P.J. Walker, I was actually a little disappointed when those reports started to come out and then Kevin Stefanski confirmed it. It's not because of that. It's not because of that Ravens game. It's probably playing into a little bit, but it's more so I know what P.J. Walker is and I understand the argument. We know what he is. We know where his ceiling is. We know he turns the ball over a lot. But he did go two and one. And more time with the, the more time he was playing with this team, the more we were starting to see him be able to show who he was in the game. Again, I know the turnovers are going to come. Do you think the turnovers are going to stop with the rookie quarterback? No, they need to slow down a great deal so that some other team passes us for the most turnovers in, in the league. But I was actually disappointed that it wasn't PJ Walker. But look, love DTR. We're Cleveland fans. We're going to get behind. Him. We're going to support him. Now, would I rather see DTR, PJ Walker, or a veteran QB that's kind of on the street? I'll take one of the two options that are in our in our building right now. Now, if they pick someone up and it takes a couple of weeks, and maybe you know DTR has one of those games or one of those stretches where he's just not playing well, and you need to finish out the year the right way and know that you have someone back there you can trust that now knows the system has been in the building for a few weeks. I can see that option, but look, someone coming off the street, like a Matt Ryan coming out of the broadcast booth, Joe Flacco hasn't played. Tom Brady's not really working out. Oh, he's not coming out. Like, there's no way he's on retire. The only no. reason I said I'd even really want him is not because I don't think Tom Brady's going to lead us to a Super Bowl. I would want him to come here to show us how to go into the playoffs, how to prepare like a champion. Yeah, you like, need... You I need want that his knowledge is more than anything. And and totally understand that, totally respect that. I just, right now, I mean, you can bring in a third emergency QB. You got to ride with the guys that have been here and been working in, in practice with these guys. They've gotten, I mean, P.J. Walker is more reps than DTR, but DTR is going to get all the reps this week. So Amari Cooper, Elijah Moore, Kareem Hunt, David Njoku, all of the weapons are going to get a feel for what DTR does, what he likes to do when he throws the ball. And look, I've heard this point a couple times today, so it's not like it's anything original. But the run game is in a much different place now after the Chubb injury than it was against the Baltimore Ravens. So he has the run game. And, and he doesn't have a team that's in shock of Nick Chubb's like knee getting blown away. Yeah. You do have a team that's in shock of Deshaun Watson when they really didn't know that that was going to happen and he was going to be that he was going to have to be yeah. out for the rest of the season. However, players. the best part is, and there is no great part about injuries, but the silver lining here is that they have been through that traumatic injury of one of your top guys before. So understanding what it took to kind of handle that before expediting that process keeping the task at hand of going one and oh each week keeping those same mantras those same philosophies those same cliches i think is really going to help them. yeah they get a chance to process this injury not during a game like you see a guy go down and you're like his season's over that, that's in your head during the game there's just no way you can say it's not right they think... have the whole week to process what happened today and come game time their DTR is their quarterback, and that's what they're rolling with. And I think that's got to be a little bit like inspirational, right? That he, that what you know, knowing now that Watson was injured like that, came out that second half, played the way he did, didn't give up. A lot of you know, yeah, there's adrenaline, and Lord knows what else the trainers pumped into his shoulder, but you know, that's really got to motivate you to know that you know he didn't just he didn't get hurt and fade away. You know, he came back out injured gave it his all, they won that game. It was a team effort. You know, that's huge. That's a huge motivation, I think, for this team. 
it is a huge motivation, Peter. You're absolutely right. And I think – I don't even know if he got shot up at halftime because maybe they did something with his ankle. But with the shoulder, people were saying that he didn't say anything to the trainers until the, after the game, well after the game, where adrenaline wore off and he started to feel it again besides that initial hit whenever it happened. He doesn't even know when it happened in this game, when the shot to the shoulder that's taken him out for the rest of the season actually happened. So that's going to give them some motivation. And hearing that, whether you believe the reports or not, uh, nothing was confirmed, I believe, in any of the press conferences in the locker room today, but him going to six or seven different doctors trying to get clearance to play and then seeing if he could just, you know, get shot up with stuff before every game and wanted to go out there and play with his team, that's, that's culture. That's when you start to see culture, when you start to hear those things instead of, this guy's going behind this guy's back. This guy's texting down on the sideline. All the stories that we've heard before, cult, good culture is when guys are willing to sacrifice that much to continue playing for their team. Now, he can't sacrifice that because then he could be costing himself his career. And that's exactly why they told him, every doctor told him, you need the surgery, you need to go through this, you'll be ready for next season. Now those guys in this locker room, they're going to play for Nick Chubb. They're going to play for Deshaun Watson. You can say that that's some made-up motivation or whatever. If you don't like it, that's fine. Professional athletes, athletes in general, find different ways to get themselves motivated, and if it makes them perform to the best of their ability and it brings wins for teams that we root for wholeheartedly here in Cleveland, I'm all for it. I'm all for it. One last comment on YouTube before we hit our break. Brian chimes in again saying uh, the stats with two running backs on the field believes uh, he saw that the Browns are averaging 4.7 yards per play, almost five per play. So again, having that, having those dual threat kind of running backs that can catch it out of the backfield, but also going to power run Ford it. Averaged over six yards of carry against Ra the Ravens. And yeah. none of those came off like a, a 60 yard run to boost his average. He had 17 carries and averaged over uh, six yards a carry. That's insane, dude. That's so good. And you talk about being tougher longer like Coach Stefanski did at the end of that – in the in the uh, locker room after that game. Look at the run by by Ford with the whole team pushing him, except for a couple of guys. I think Elijah Moore and Mari Cooper were on the opposite side of the field, so they didn't get a chance to get in there. David Njoku, who takes a guy for a ride. For Elijah Moore out there pushing. Yeah, <laughs> the orange like, wave man the orange wave that was awesome by the way and that's and that's the mindset they're probably going to take look both teams well, our, so our wide rookie wide receiver laying that dude out and I'm, it was a clean block too it was clean block mike and, ford the, the shot I, lie, I liked how i stood over him a little bit yeah it was a little showboating but yeah, yeah that should have like it there, there, there could have or should have been a flag there but mike ford the hit on Lamar Jackson, I know that his foot, you know, as you see, like, the slow motion is touching the sideline. But that's so hard to, within that millisecond, for a referee to officiate. I don't think they call it when you're, like, foot is, the like, just outside. And because you're still going at full speed. Side and it kept going. And he's a runner. They're yeah. not going to call that. Yeah. You're, you're still going at full speed. So, um, then, you know, Mike Ford kind of shook Lamar Jackson because the very next play he threw it right to Mike Ford to get his first interception. And then, of course, Greg Newsom later in the game. Just just a great game overall. And you hope that with the news today, you know, yeah, it's tough, but they've turned the page. We kind of turn the page tomorrow as fans to the back to the Steelers. We know that Steelers fans are going to try to overrun that stadium. And we need to be the loudest. We need to make I sure. I saw my tickets. I'll be there yelling. We, we are not letting the people from that city into our stadium this time because it means a lot and look we get a chance to be there when things are on the line uh brian also talked about philip rivers i mean it's not that i don't like these quarterbacks and some of the names that are mentioned it's just how long they've been out and we saw we saw with deshaun watson time off even a couple weeks off does you don't look sharp right away so um Need to go with the guys that are at least in some sort of rhythm when they're getting to, to throw the ball in practice. We'll hit our final break of the night. Yes, we're keeping it short. We're going till 9 o'clock tonight. This is The Voice of Land on the Big Play Network. Are you struggling to hire the right talent or maybe even find the right career? Vector Technical makes it easy. 
Since 1992, Vector has provided Ohio employers with a reliable process for hiring and have helped thousands of job seekers advance in their careers. Vector Technical is more than just a temp agency. We invest time to get to know each client and candidate personally. Vector places people in job opportunities that they are truly excited about. Interested in learning more? Visit our website at www.vectortechnicalinc.com to see a full list of our current job opportunities and to find out what Vector Technical can offer you. Get your gear at voiceoftheland.com forward slash shop. One. Back. Welcome back to the Voice of the Land. Yes, our final segment of the evening. We are on the Big Play Network. I'm Kevin Arnold. He is always positive, Jay. Peter Tellup, our producer extraordinaire. Out there somewhere, you've heard his voice here tonight, but you'll never see his face. He's on the get... line. He's on the line. You ever seen the movie, uh, or is it The Interns? The Internship, right? Yeah, oh, with... Uh, yeah, with Owen uh, Wilson and... Then, yeah, you get the picture, and then you, you put it on the line. Online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the Exchange, line. Exchange a gram. Exchange a gram. <laughs> I love Great the movie. Great movie. I, I love that movie so much. I love Me the I, I love the app idea that they actually come up with. Like mm -hmm. does that actually exist? Like I feel I like know. someone should have made that app. They should have. But it's our final segment, Kevin. What do we want to talk about? I'm gonna let you uh, I'm gonna make you we had we had two subjects. I don't know. We thought about I also thought about the Cavs, but we got time to talk about them. I am wearing a Cavs sweatshirt. It's just I got a Cavs hat. It I don't want to I'm already the day's already been where it is. I don't want to go down the line on the line of being frustrated of and just going through everything that I've seen this season already. Like they're not playing defense and it's I guess when you focus more on changing your offense, you're going to lose some things. But the calling card, this team's been together now. This, the calling card should be defense, and they should be playing better defense. How the Kings, who only shot less than 30% on the season coming into last night or two nights ago, whenever the game was, I don't even know. These games are on How the West Coast. How long do we have the team held a players-only meeting? <laughs> you know it's coming, Kevin. You know it's coming. Yeah, I I mean I, I I'm just not concerned. It's super early. It's like to yeah. me it's like baseball. I don't really let me start. go let me I go twenty games. But I want to get too concerned until all around all star break. I mean, I I'll even look at Christmas break or the turn of the year. That's when I'll start really looking at it. But it's not that we won't talk about it until yeah. then. Just um fully concerned. I mean, I look, I I've needed basketball to kind of take some of this quarterback in yeah. and out conversation away from me and they're not helping. And now the Browns are playing well, but they don't have their quarterback. Like it's just this never ending roller coaster as a Cleveland fan. Kevin. Yes. We were talking about a subject before this. I'm going to change it right now. All right. We wanted to talk about, cause I seen online people saying who they wanted to smash the guitar before the Browns game. I have the most absolute 100% perfect candidate. I don't know if he's schedule. Let him do it, but I don't care. He's got to do it. Can you guess who it is? No, <laughs> my mind, LeBron, my, my baby. brain. LeBron, that place would go nuts. I mean, if they keep doing that before games, I'm sure. It, like when LeBron is not playing anymore, I'm sure because he's he's all about the NFL now. Like he's even going. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if they don't have a, if they don't have stuff on Sunday, he's going live on Instagram and doing his weekly picks before games even start on Sunday. I mean, so, he's about the Browns all the time now. I mean, he's been doing that for a couple of years now. Yeah. But, you know. Let's I mean, get him out there and smash the guitar and get the people going. I mean, I would love to see that. I mean, of course, I don't get to see it. I have to hear about it and then see the videos on social media because I'll be running the game, the running the broadcast. Through well, our... You'll definitely hear it if it's LeBron, if you're in Cleveland. Oh, I, yeah, I. Yeah, look up the Lakers' schedule right now. I don't know. Where are just they at? comes out, does his little <sighs> stunner thing, and then just smashes it. Oh, I'm ready for it. Peter, who do you want? 
I didn't even think about. It. I I have no idea, but I like your idea. Oh of LeBron. my god! Yeah. I think I like your idea of LeBron. I honestly, I think I, that would be really fire up the the crowd and you know. Get I mean, the think you got any? What a hot take! Legendary, <laughs> but any legendary <laughs> Indian slash Guardians player or Cavs player, former Browns player. I like your idea. We'll just go with that. <laughs> You want to? You want to hear? I'm gonna start staring at the camera again when Kevin goes to me. You want to hear a hot take? No, go for it. <laughs> um, so I don't really have a name in mind because I actually hate the guitar smash. I absolutely hate the guitar smash. Why is it always guitars? And all we're known for is rock and roll. What is the point of what the guitar known smash? For? Two houses down, more or less, is the Rock and Roll of Fame. I understand that. I love the guitar smash. You don't see it, but it gets the people going. Like Will Smith. Because everybody's drunk and they don't know. It's provocative. Everybody's drunk. They don't care anything that someone's like. What else are you going to smash, Kevin? Go out there and throw a pie and a fake mascot? I'm down for that, but yeah. It's just, it's so contrived. It just feels, I don't know. It just gives me bad. Ooh, I had another idea. You don't want the guitar smash. Let's do a special one since it's getting into the, uh, the Why baseball Hall of Fame. Anything? Let just the guys go out there and smash. And just start playing the John Adams drum. No, that's, th- doom, that's, doom, doom. no, no, no. <laughs> that stays to baseball. Oh, wow, no. And Traveling whatever. gatekeeper. Well, they're going to need to fix that. <laughs> By the way, the Guardians are going to need to fix that if they really want to honor John Adams' memory. When they pump that into the stadium, they don't do it at the right time. And it's not on beat. And then the whole crowd who gets off beat anyways for any slow clap type thing because no one can stay on beat. And that drives me <laughs> nuts as a drummer. They need to fix that whole recording because. Look, John Adams is is a staple, and his drums going to his drum is going to Cooperstown. I do believe. I believe he's going. It's so I can't have baseball. one drum for a Browns game. I mean, you can have a drum. Look, Moon well, Dog, a little you know, a little John Adams drum action going down. No, Moon Dog has a drum. It's a different size. It's a different sound. Browns can get their own drum. But look, why are we still on the musical instruments? We're not yeah, just, you, neither one of you guys told me who you want to smash it. Well, because you just kind of threw it at us last minute, and so I already gave my answer. I don't want to see it anymore. No, no, that's not an answer. It is. It's going to happen. I don't come with hot takes a lot. But if anybody is watching that loves, like you do, is going to get worked up because I legitimately, this isn't I'm making this up just to have a hot take, that we're not Stephen A, we're not first take. I don't even know who you are, Kevin. I I hate the guitar smash. Have you ever seen Animal House? Yes. The best part of that movie is when that douchebag is playing the guitar on the the, uh, stairs, because we've all been at parties where some jerk is playing the guitar and he sucks. And you just want to smash it. And then he smashes it. It's yeah. like the best part of the whole movie. All right, that's a movie. As, as a guitarist, I'm offended now. <laughs> Why? I didn't say you were bad, though. Oh, there's you're there's not the, smash, you're not the guitars, guy man. that just learned how to play in college. Yeah. I'm just messing with you. The, the, yeah. best yeah. scene, the best part of that movie is Bluto's speech about the Germans bombing Pearl Harbor. So. <laughs> Don't ruin my narrative, <laughs> Peter. <laughs> look, look smashing a guitars was all well and good when it was done every now and again when you got that at a rock concert in the past now every new rock band has to all they do is they just smash all their instruments they just think they're cool and they go smashing their drum set and their guitars half the people that smash the guitar at these browns games don't even know how to do it they're just they're so like robotic uh, you set them off jay way to go way to go <laughs> Set him off. I'm about to go off on Kevin. It's well, killing me. Well, you don't have time because it's nine o'clock, and that is the voice of the land this week. We will have an episode next week prior to Thanksgiving. We'll have some fun. We'll talk 
more Thanksgiving. We'll review the Browns game. We'll talk a little bit more Cavs at that point. And make sure you turn your radio on. Listen to that Christmas music. No, no. We'll talk about yeah. that. No. Smash guitars and Christmas music, baby. Uh, no, we'll talk about that and a lot more next time. Guardians have a new manager. We didn't even touch on it tonight. We don't have time. But for Always Positive J, I am Kevin Arl. For our producer extraordinaire, Peter Tellup, reminding all of you sports fans out there, don't let anyone ever tell you it's just a game. We truly love don't, you all 3,000. Don't talk about it. Be about it. And live life. All gas, no brakes. We'll see you next time right here on the Big Play Network with the voice of the land.